Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Madam Secretary. Good to see you. Um, I have two questions. I want to talk about the hybrid learning line item in your, in your budget. I also want to talk about the implementation of the teacher evaluation as well as the school performance profile, which we've discussed a Good. little bit this afternoon. But before I do so, uh, I just want to compliment you on the work that you did with regard to um, championing the IRC approval, the revised Chapter 4 regulations. I knew that, know that was a, a difficult, um, some difficult work this summer with regard to um, the approval of the revised Chapter 4 regs. And we, we discussed, Representative Pyle earlier today talked a little bit uh, with you about Common Core. And we recognize that the failure to adopt the revised Chapter 4 regulations would have resulted in the approval of the National Common Core standards, which would have been adopted back in 2010, would have required the development and implementation of Keystone exams in 10 subject areas. Uh, would have required the department to realign PSSAs and Keystone exams to the National Common Core state standards, which would have resulted in significant costs. So just at the outset, just want to thank you for your work with regard to um, the adoption of the new Pennsylvania Core standards, the Keystone exams, the revised Chapter 4 regulations. Um, first, if I could just ask you, um, your sense of uh, the implementation of the teacher evaluation. Could you provide this committee with an update with regard to the implementation of the new teacher evaluation system as well as the school performance profile and how the school performance profile is being used to replace the AYP model? Okay. Um, just pull this information down here. The uh, teacher evaluation um, for classroom teachers, Act 82, uh, went into effect this, this school year. So the um, we are fully implementing uh, the first year. As you know, it's a three-year implementation. After a three-year pilot, that and then, uh, in fact, was put into, re uh, into law by Act 82. Um, it was, we worked with thousands of educators as, as we were um, implementing and developing that program. And so this year, um, for classroom teachers, teachers who deliver direct instruction in the classroom, um, we have a new teacher evaluation system. It will be 85% um, the traditional way, and then the school building profile, which is on which was published uh, in September next year. Um, we then add the elective process and the third year that for those teachers who have individualized testing, that piece will go in. So we'll be fully implemented in three years. Next year, the principal evaluation, the revised principal evaluation and specialists will go into effect um, in, in their cycle. So we are fully implementing. Uh, we've been training for three years. Um, this will be our fourth year of training principals. We've developed supports um, for teachers on our standards aligned system, uh, professional development for overviews, again, for Act 48 credit free um, to the, to the uh, teacher and to the school systems. And for each of the components in Danielson, which is the observation model, for each of those 22 components there, uh, is staff development, again, that's been developed if a teacher uh, through um, their dialogue with the principal has a weakness or an area that needs improvement, there is staff development for all those components on the standard design system. So I think we've got a very robust support system that improves um, uh, the quality of instruction that's in the classroom because we all know how critical an effective teacher is for, for being in that classroom. Um, we're training now on uh, what we call the student learning objectives, which is the elective piece. Uh, we have found uh, one of the needs uh, that we have for our educators is something we call uh, data literacy, uh, which is how do you use student test scores or achievement um, to, in fact, then instruct and change instruction. So we're out there working um, and, and doing that piece of training as we move forward. The school performance profile, as you know, we launched uh, the first one, uh, which was based on 12-13 uh, uh, student performance. That was launched in September. Uh, and for every building, that's over 3,000 buildings um, uh, in the Commonwealth, which are your traditional uh, public schools, brick and mortar, brick and mortar charters, cybers, and vocational schools. So that's all up there for folks to see. Um, and we're working on that. Again, that was over 4,000 educators in interaction and saying, what should be? If you want your building to be measured for quality, what would you include as a measure of that? And it's a, it's a very robust multiple measures of student achievement. So fully launched into those um, two major initiatives, which uh, really raised the transparency and the rigor of the profession. Thank you for that. I was extremely pleased to see in the governor's budget request the $10 million for hybrid learning. 
for those on the, that may, uh, may not be familiar with hybrid learning on the committee, uh, I'm fortunate to come from Lancaster County where we've had a number of our local school districts that have been extremely innovative in the use of technology in the classroom to individualize and customize a learning experience for Pennsylvania students. I've uh, been in numerous classrooms where I've had the opportunity to, to see this, witness this in person, just to see a level of engagement with young people um, and, 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 a, and a classroom that really empowers students and empowers teachers. If you could sort of describe for the committee, for those that may not be familiar, what hybrid learning is, and can you talk to us a little bit about, um, do we have early student achievement results with regards to um, hybrid learning. You could speak to the benefits with regard to student achievement. Um, and then finally, do we have any feedback that the department has received perhaps from parents, from students, from, uh, from educators, uh, their level of satisfaction with, with hybrid learning? Well, first, let me describe hybrid learning, or digital classrooms, if you will. Um, it, it's a different instructional strategy. It's a, a different way of presenting content or curriculum to students. Um, one way um, that they do is called a flipped classroom, where, in fact, a student may take direct instruction and then go home and, on through digital uh, content, learn and support the, um, what happened in that classroom. Um, a, another uh, model is, uh, of hybrid learning is what we call uh, dividing the classroom up so that a third of the students are delivering direct instruction. Then they go into what we call um, cooperative learning groups, where in fact uh, they work together on projects that reinforce the content that the teacher taught. And then for another third of the classroom, then they move on to individualized learning using technology, uh, not only digital content, but the hardware. The benefit of that is that when they are in doing their individual learning, if a student needed enrichment or remediation, you can, you can really tailor um, that, that that individual instruction for the student's needs. Um, it, I visited classrooms um, uh, that have hybrid learning, and uh, the level of engagement in the students in, in their education um, is amazing to watch. Uh, they, I, I ask, being an old math teacher, um, you know, I would visit classrooms and say, um, you know, do you like, you know, like this? Is this an interesting way to learn? I can't tell you one student that didn't say, yes, they preferred this. I think uh, we know that when students are engaged in, in their learning, their achievement increases. So the more um, we can deal with the different learning styles of children, some like that interaction with teachers, some like to work alone, some like to work in groups. That type of instruction and, and classroom organization, I think, increases the student engagement and increases student achievement. So do we have data that would suggest, yes, um, those schools that um, were our kind of uh, pioneers into the hybrid learning um, have looked at their PSSA scores and they've kind of compared those hybrid classes to the non-hybrid classes and student achievement has significantly increased, significantly in math terms, you know, of significant difference. Um, we find it mostly, it's interesting in the keystones, the, the, in uh, those increases that we've had in students who've engaged in those hybrid classes and then taken those keystones at the end of instruction. So we do have student achievement from those pilots um, that, uh, that we have. Uh, we've also, uh, through those uh, pilot schools, asked for parents and teachers to say, what do you think? Did it work? And we're, we're getting very positive feedback from, uh, and I, again, if you're interested, I can give you the where to find, or anyone, where to find those results online as they're published. So we are looking through um, this hybrid learning grant, the 10 million, to um, start planning grants for new folks, implementation for new folks, but also um, expansion grants for those that are already in there. So again, it's a different instructional strategy. Teachers need to be um, uh, given the, the tools of how to diversify that classroom, because it's not, it's three, it's really three lesson plans versus one lesson plan um, because of, of the nature of the learning. But um, it's, it, it has some very promising um, uh, results that we've seen so far. Mm -hmm. Thank, you. Thank you very much.